the interior of a large conference room of a local government unit. It has lots of benches and chairs. A woman, approximately 30 to 35 years old, with layered blonde hair, wearing a pink dress and green suede high heels set on her bare feet. The lady performs in a seated position, and occasionally pulls her heel out of her left shoe. A popular sweetener linked to an increased risk of heart attack and stroke for years, much has been said about the harmfulness of sugar and its disastrous effect on our body. It was not for nothing that he finally earned the not-so-honorable name of, White Death. Meanwhile, it turns out that using its potential substitutes, we can harm ourselves. In a new study, researchers have determined that a popular sugar substitute, erythritol, may be associated with an increased risk of heart attack and stroke. Researchers from the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio decided to take a closer look at one of the commonly used sweeteners, erythritol, also known as erythritol. It is a type of sugar alcohol that is about 70% as sweet as sugar of the same weight, but has almost no calories. Interestingly, it also occurs in the natural environment, e.g. in some fruits, such as grapes and even in mushrooms. It is also produced endogenously in the body. Above all, however, it is industrially produced, added to foods and is becoming an increasingly common ingredient in beverages and foods advertised as a weight loss aid. The researchers decided to take a closer look at the medical records of approximately 4,000 patients, both in the United States and Europe, who were currently being screened for potential heart conditions. Analyzers showed that people with the highest erythritol content in their blood were also much more likely to suffer a heart attack or stroke in the next three years. Equally important, the vast majority of these patients already had some form of cardiovascular disease at that time, or had risk factors such as diabetes or high blood pressure. However, the most important thing is to answer the above question. Well, erythritol stimulates the action of platelets, which, however, in this case do not contribute to the better functioning of our body. On the contrary, more specifically, for faster clot formation. This has been confirmed, for example, by studies conducted on mice. However, can we say that in the case of humans the scale of the threat is high? According to the authors of the study, yes. Blood samples were taken from people who drank a drink sweetened with 30 grams of erythritol. And tests showed that the concentration of this substance in the blood increased significantly in just a few hours. Worse, this extremely high level was then able to persist for up to two days. This is enough time to contribute to the formation of clots, and these can lead to a heart attack or stroke. It should be noted, however, that the analyzers carried out were not free from defects. First of all, they were conducted in people over the age of 60, who, due to heart disease they suffered from, even without erythritol, were at a higher risk of both heart attack and stroke. Moreover, while the study found some link between clot formation and erythritol, it did not show that the compound actually caused strokes and heart attacks in humans. Laser-powered nuclear fusion research, breakthrough results in this field of science. The experiment with laser-powered nuclear fusion and the results obtained by a team from the U.S. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, are groundbreaking. They represent a milestone in the work on inertial thermonuclear fusion the United States Department of Energy announced on Tuesday that the National Ignition Facility, NIF, operating in California, managed to achieve a positive energy balance in the process of thermonuclear fusion using high-power laser radiation. According to the scientists, 
This is a crucial moment, the first step towards achieving an energy source that will revolutionize the world. Detailed scientific data is currently being analyzed. But we can certainly talk about very good news. The energy generated in the fusion reaction was greater, 3.15 megajoules, than the energy supplied to the fusion fuel, 2.05 megajoules. The conducted experiment and the obtained results are groundbreaking in this field of science and constitute a milestone in research work on inertial thermonuclear fusion where Using strong laser beams, it is possible to compress the thermonuclear fuel precisely enough to make the fusion process as effective as possible. The NIF conducts research on thermonuclear fusion triggered by powerful lasers, which is slightly different than in most experimental research conducted in Europe in the version with magnetic plasma confinement. We can say that there are two branches of work on thermonuclear fusion. We are talking here about fusion devices, in which the initiation of synthesis takes place quite differently. In both cases, hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium, are used as fuel. In one, the power of powerful lasers is used, as in NIF, in the other, a magnetic trap tokamak and stellarator devices in which a rare plasma circulating inside the device is enclosed as a result the synthesis processes are slower and less dynamic which makes them easier to control the ultimate goal of both types of experimentation is to generate energy for humanity fuel resources hydrogen isotopes would be almost inexhaustible in practice and the amount of waste is to be much smaller than in the case of typical nuclear power plants. However, that will have to wait. In both cases, scientists still have a lot of work to do. As the road to building a commercial fusion power plant is still quite complicated. The latest experiment, however, has shown that it may be feasible to create it on the basis of inertial fusion, i.e powered by lasers. At the same time, it is worth mentioning the recent success of experiments conducted in Great Britain, in the JET, Joint European Taurus, Tokamak device, where a positive energy balance was also obtained. Great hopes are attached to the European program Eurofusion and, in the future, to a new Tokamak called ITER. In Europe, Research on fusion into tokamak devices, i.e. magnetic confinement of plasma, dominates. Both approaches, lasers and tokamaks, require overcoming countless challenges. The experiment just described at the NIH is a bit like trying to hit a peppercorn with 192 pins, so that all the pins hit at the same time, without piercing the grain but compressing it with perfect precision to a very high density, so that the desired reaction occurs in it. This is only a very general attempt to illustrate the process, and due to the high inaccuracy and emerging instabilities in the case of the NIF experiment, special whole arm type targets are used. They use the indirect interaction of a laser beam with an example of pepper through a gold cylinder where the laser hits and generates strong X-rays that compress the fuel. Unfortunately, when it comes to forecasts, it is currently impossible to determine the time when the first power plant could be built and what technology it will be based on. The experimental research device the European ITER tokamak was supposed to operate for several years, but due to the need to conduct additional research and the scale of the project, its launch is postponed. But construction is well advanced and the first plasma is expected around 2025-26. There are many reasons. The technological challenges are huge and practically all branches of science are involved in this type of projects. Materials are needed that can withstand huge temperature gradients, huge pressures and strong fluxes of neutrons and other particles.
Methods are being developed to produce and recover tritium inside the device, as its availability on Earth is limited. In the case of research on laser fusion, in order for it to be practical, it is necessary to build lasers with greater repetition, so that the frequency of interaction with the fuel ball could occur more often, and more efficient, and be equipped with new technologies. However, the challenges are not only technological in nature. The costs of such projects are huge. No European country could undertake such a program on its own. That is why, for example, many European countries participate in Eurofusion and also non-European countries in the ITER project. Americans, on the other hand, are looking for partners in the private sector, which, however, by investing gigantic funds, counts on profits for which it is still too early. That's not all, much depends on politics. Currently, humanity still has access to fossil fuels and uses them to produce energy, which limits the funding opportunities for fusion research. Fossil fuel resources are still shrinking. Obtaining them is becoming more and more difficult, and their combustion contributes to the greenhouse effect. Thermonuclear fusion is clean energy, which would definitely benefit our planet. Therefore, the breakthrough obtained at the NIF allows us to look at the near horizon with optimism and believe that the energy of the future will be energy from thermonuclear fusion, on which scientists are still working.